God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And we'll also with you. you. Well, hello everyone, and welcome wherever you are joining us from in your own homes. It is wonderful for me uh, to be back in Christchurch Field for our service today. I think the last time that I was here was towards the beginning of March, and it is a great uh, blessing and privilege to be able to be here once more to open up the doors and to be able to record our Sunday worship from here. I'm joined, of course, by uh, my travelling household congregation and thank you to them for being part of that. I know that they continue to make this service even more special for people. So we begin our worship today by joining in with the opening prayer. God of all the earth, be present with us now in each of our homes as we connect together. Build us into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to you through Jesus Christ, our risen Redeemer and Healer. Amen. So we sing our first hymn today, Crown Him with Many Crowns. We come into the presence of our Lord and Saviour. We are aware of all those ways in which we have fallen short. So let us just keep silent for a moment or two to reflect on the week that is past, 
call to mind our sins and our faults before God. The Spirit of the Lord fills the whole world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Lord Jesus, you suffered a cruel death on the cross for our redemption, yet we have forgotten your pain and stayed in the realm of the evil you have defeated. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you were raised from death to bring us new life, yet we have preferred the comfort of the familiar and the empty promises of a sinful world. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you have ascended to your Father and our Father, to your God and our God. Plead there at the right hand of God for our forgiveness and entry into the fullness of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song will we praise our God. Blessed are you, Creator God, to you be praise and glory forever. As your Spirit moved over the face of the waters, bringing light and life to your creation, pour out your Spirit on us today, that we may walk as children of light, and by your grace reveal your presence. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And so we move to our first reading from the Book of Acts. The New Testament reading is taken from Acts, chapter 1, verses 6 to 14. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking upwards towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had in entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter, and John, and James, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We join in together with the canticle. 
All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your kingdom. Great and wonderful are your deeds, Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O ruler of the nations. Who shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord? For you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence, for your just dealings have been revealed. To the one who sits on the throne of the Lamb, be blessing and honour, glory and might, for ever and ever. Amen. All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your King. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I went shopping in Sainsbury's in Cheddar on Friday for the first time in months, and rather wished I hadn't. Don't get me wrong, it's wonderful the way that they have responded to the crisis, and the staff there were as lovely as ever and working hard with a smile on their face in difficult circumstances. Yet it was as if somewhere a management committee had sat down and tried to work out how shopping could be made the most soul-sapping, miserable experience possible. Key to it all was the long wait in a queue outside, shuffling dutifully up to the next piece of tape every minute or so, reading all those notices telling us what we could and couldn't do, keeping one's distance, and looking around to see everyone with their head down, deliberately not interacting, perhaps spending all the time on their phones. And so it was that, as often happens in situations like that, I gave myself a good talking to and told myself to stop being such a grumpy old man. And after that, I was properly able to notice the river that gurgled and shimmered beside the queue, properly able to notice those around me, properly able to chat to my own who was with me. And I began to enjoy the waiting time. 
Waiting can be a hard thing sometimes, can't it? And we've had a lot of waiting to do recently. Open-ended waiting can be particularly challenging. And perhaps that's why we're so demanding of dates and timescales at the moment. When will shops reopen again? When will football begin? When will I be able to see my mother in her care home? When will I be able to go on holiday? Give me a date. I need to plan. I need to know. It's the not knowing, but it's the hard part. You just have to wait. When I was a child, the most common pudding that we used to eat was wait and see pudding. I wonder if anyone else used to have that regularly as well. For whenever my sister or I would ask, what's for pudding? My dad would always answer, wait and see. It used to drive us mad. Wait and see times can be very testing. They can also be times of great growth. In the church's year, we are in another wait and see period. One that we, we don't often think about in that way. Perhaps in Advent, we might focus on waiting. Perhaps we might think about the failure of the disciples to watch and wait with Jesus in Gethsemane as we get towards the end of Holy Week. There's the Holy Saturday waiting time between Good Friday and Easter Sunday. But here, also, as the disciples have to say their final farewells to their rabbi and lord, watching him return to his father in heaven, they are promised that he will return, but no time scale is given. They simply have to wait and see. I wonder how you have been using this waiting time. Has it brought your family closer together or exposed hidden rifts? Has it enabled you to find and care for or to be cared for by new neighbours? Some have tried to fill the time with frantic activity, trying to do as much as they can to mitigate the abnormality of the situation. Some have been thrown into enforced inactivity as if caught in the headlights of the situation. One member of our congregations has written in their response to the questions that I put out there. For me, I am slowed down and I'm leaning more on God in, on and for everything. The restrictions have made me appreciate small things, a sort of mindfulness that I notice others are experiencing too. I wonder if you recognise yourself in any of those responses. In the passage from Acts that we heard earlier, we find out that the disciples gather together in the room upstairs where they were staying and devote themselves to prayer as they waited. And that was for a period of ten days between what we now call Ascension and Pentecost. But they wouldn't have known that. They wouldn't have known that it was going to be ten days. Jesus gave no timetable or time scale. Nevertheless, they acted faithfully. They, they trusted what they'd been told by Jesus, that he would come back, even though they didn't know when that would be. They didn't lose the faith. And I guess, knowing that mixed bunch whose names we were given there, they probably had some pretty lively debates about what had happened. What did it mean? What to do next? Who had done what at the crucial times? What the future was going to be? But we're told they prayed. They allowed God to lead them into the next part of the incredible journey they were on. The global wave of prayer, thy kingdom come, which seems more pertinent and necessary this year, 
calls us to use this wait and see time to pray for God, to lead us into the next part of the incredible journey we're on. It calls us to wait and pray for the gift of the Holy Spirit to come into our lives. As the great confirmation of prayer puts it, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and inward strength, the spirit of knowledge and true godliness. It calls us to pray for five people from among our friends, families and neighbours that they will come to know God's immense love for us all. It calls us to be faithful in prayer and to deepen our relationship with God. It calls us to pray, Thy kingdom come. As Bishop Peter writes in his reflection on this passage, it reminds us that as we wait upon God through this time of challenge, as we come together in new ways for prayer and worship, as we hold on to the promises of God, as we seek to be effective witnesses, the kingdom of God is coming. And that is both our hope and our joy. Lord, May your kingdom come. Amen. Let us now affirm the faith of the Church which Christ commissions us to share with the world. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, the source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the Church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. And these are the prayers uh, contributed this Sunday by Mike Gallagher. Rejoicing in your ascension to be with your Father. Lord Jesus, we remember your time here on earth and your healing of the sick and needy. We reach up to you in the midst of the coronavirus crisis so that we may experience your healing love. If it be your will, heal those who are sick. May they regain their strength and health through the quality medical care the health service in this country provides. And we ask you to look with mercy on those in other countries who may not be so fortunate. We pray that those who died from the virus be at rest in your eternal kingdom. Be with the families of those who are sick or have died. As they worry and grieve, protect them from illness and despair and grant them your comfort and peace. Protect and inspire the doctors, nurses, researchers, and all medical professionals who seek to heal and help those who are affected, and who put themselves at risk in the process. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for our troubled world, its peoples and their leaders. We pray for those caught up in war and violence and hatred in the Middle East. We pray for the people of Hong Kong and for Christians and Muslims being persecuted in China. May the right to freedom be upheld and righteousness flourish so that injustice and wrong may be overcome. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we give thanks for the many people worshipping with us online, we pray that this may lead to a reawakening of faith in you. Grant the leaders of our church 
Archbishop Justin, Bishops Peter and Ruth, the necessary gifts of leadership and mission that your churches may emerge from the current closure stronger and with greater sense of purpose and direction. And help us to be a blessing to them in fulfilling your commission. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all the people that we encounter in our daily lives, especially through the internet and social media in these difficult times. Help us to recognise Christ in one another, however stressed and tired they and we may be. At this time between Ascension and Pentecost, we bring to you those of our families and friends who we love dearly, but who have not yet accepted you as their Saviour. Send your Holy Spirit to speak to their hearts and help us to direct our thoughts, words and prayers as we place them in your hands to draw them to your everlasting kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all those in need, for those who are lonely, broken-hearted, vulnerable, afraid or depressed, especially victims of domestic abuse, we pray for those suffering from illness, particularly those requesting our prayers and who are on our prayer list. Comfort those who mourn, particularly the families of Peggy Shaw and Claire White. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we ask that you help us to recognise the risen and ascended Christ in the face of someone we meet today and give us an opportunity to brighten their day with a smile and a word. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, the King of glory. Born of a woman, he came to rescue, came to the rescue of our human race. Dying for us, he trampled death and conquered sin. By the glory of his resurrection, he opened the way to life eternal, and by his ascension, gave us the sure hope that where he is, we may also be. Therefore the universe resounds with Easter joy, and with choirs of angels we sing forever to your praise. And so being made one by the power of the Spirit, let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we sing our second hymn today is a hymn that's been composed especially for the Thy Kingdom Come prayer initiative, uh, sung to the well-known tune that we would sing, Tell Out My Soul to. Thy Kingdom Come, Lord, teach us how to pray.
as we wait in silence, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we listen to your word, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we worship you in majesty, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your refreshing, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your renewing, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your equipping, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your empowering, make us ready for your coming spirit. God the Father, who has given to his Son the name above every name, strengthen you to proclaim Christ Jesus as Lord. Amen. God the Son, who is our great High Priest, passed into the heavens, plead for you at the right hand of the Father. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who pours out his abundant gifts upon the Church, make you faithful servants of Christ our King. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and all for whom you love and care, and remain with you always. Amen. Stay in your homes in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.